Mitch flies are a mosquito-like insect that are found around the world. Their aquatic larvae are commonly known as bloodworms. Bloodworms make a great snack for aquarium fish. Breeders use bloodworms to condition and raise fish due to their high protein content. While bloodworms are available freeze-dried or frozen commercially, they're also easy to grow at home. That's what I'm going to do in today's video. The first thing to do is find a source for your bloodworms. It may be easy to find them online, but it may also be easy to find them in your backyard. Mitch flies aren't too picky about where they lay their eggs. Pretty much any body of water will do. However, you want your baby bloodworms to be able to survive as well, so it helps to create a bottom full of leaf litter for them to feed off of. If you choose this method, you'll want to make sure you keep an eye on your bucket to make sure no mosquito larvae are getting in. An easier way to start your bloodworm culture might be to just collect them directly from a body of water that already exists. Lakes and ponds are really good places to find them, but the bucket method also works to generate midge fly cultures. This is a small trough that I use to culture live bearing fish in the summer, but in the winter it has nothing but leaf litter in it. As you can see, even just turning over one of the leaves reveals a couple of midge fly larvae already there. Once you've located some larvae, it's time to get your container set up. Because we have the space in our backyard, we use an 80 gallon trough to culture our bloodworms. We have it combined with a Daphnia culture, both of which make great food for our aquarium fish. But you don't have to worry if you don't have this much space. A bucket with a similar mesh cover would work just fine, as would a smaller container. The cover is the important part. The adult midge flies actually don't need to eat, so you can maintain the entire life cycle in this single unit. Be careful not to open it at night though, the midge flies are nocturnal. The way we made the lid for this container was by stapling shade cloth to 2x4s. Once you have your container ready, it's time to make it livable for the bloodworms. As I mentioned before, bloodworms are detritivores, meaning they're going to eat the rotting plant material in the bottom of the container as well as whatever you supplement it with. For our substrate, we gathered dead leaves and mixed it with our household compost and blended it really finely to create a nice substrate for the bloodworms. You'll want to make sure to blend it really fine so that it's easier to harvest your bloodworms when that time comes. After adding your mixture to the trough, you can just add dechlorinated water and there you go, that's your setup. Once you've added your initial bloodworms, all you need to do from there is to maintain it. Keep your container in a shaded area and feed it every few days or so. We feed our container a 50-50 mix of soy flour and yeast. The food is primarily for the Daphnia, but the bloodworms aren't picky and will eat those things along with the leaf litter. When it's time to feed, we just add about a teaspoon of the ratio to about a quarter cup of water, mix it together, and then dump it into the culture. Now it's time to talk about how to harvest your bloodworms. It's important to keep the life cycle of the midge flies in mind when you're thinking about harvesting. A single female can lay up to 3,000 eggs at a time depending on the species. However, it can take about a month for the larvae to reach a size that's acceptable for feeding and you'll always want to leave some in your culture to reproduce for the next generation. Once the flies are mature, they only live for a few days before laying more eggs and continuing the cycle. It's also important to keep in mind that your culture might not be as productive in the fall months, when some species of midge flies stay in the larval stage throughout the entire season. When harvesting your bloodworms, one of the most important considerations is your net. You want to make sure the holes in your net are big enough to let debris through, but not the bloodworms. The bloodworms encase themselves in detritus at the bottom of the container. The way that we make sure we don't overharvest is to just harvest a subset of the container every time we catch bloodworms. Here you can see a dragonfly larvae made it into our culture. This is a big whoopsie because it's probably eating a lot of our culture. It probably got in as just an egg when we originally sourced some leaf litter from another pond. With the accidental predator removed, it's time to clean up your culture and actually feed it to your fish. On a final note, I wish you luck if you decide to set up your own bloodworm culture. It can be a really rewarding experience and your fish will definitely thank you for it.